One game, three expansions, one good, one decent, one meh. Stay tuned to find out which is which. Hi everybody, welcome to another Broken Meeple Beyond the Base Game video. I'm Luke Hector and if you like what you see, please remember to thumbs up the video, leave a comment and by all means check out the Patreon campaign if you can, if you want to support the channel a little bit further. So no, this Beyond the Base series is not dead people, calm down, it's just uh, there hasn't been a lot of expansions to talk about, I've had to do top 100s and Essen and Christmas and find a new job and everything, so a lot of stuff has been taking up time, but I still like to do these Beyond the Base game series because yes, they don't get me a lot of views, but they are still fun videos to do and I do believe they provide a useful piece of information. You know, a lot of the channels don't talk about expansions at all, so when people are asking, should I get this expansion or should I not well hopefully these videos are a good focal point for you and today despite the fact that the, you know the rest of my clothes are in the laundry and I'm wearing my portal t-shirt we are talking about Arcane Wonders here with Onitama. Onitama now has three expansions to this name so it is perfect for a video like this. I'm going to go through all three expansions to sort of say how they work and give my opinions and verdict as to which ones you should get, which ones you can avoid and which ones how they sort of change up the game. So, if you don't know Onitama by now, seriously, you have got to give this one a try. I took it to Guildhall Games Fest last weekend, and I think it got played just as... I think it was like the second or first most played game out of the ones I was demoing. It's just such an elegant system of just simply... Basically, it's just chess. You have your row of students and masters, and so does the opponent. Here you go, a la chess. And all you got to do is get your master on the opponent's seat, or capture the opponent's master. And all you do is that you use these movement cards, five in every game, which tell you how to move each piece. One player has two of them on their side, one has one in the middle, and the other one has two on their side. And all you basically do is go, hmm, I'm gonna move this piece to there using that card. Swap it with the middle. Next player moves a piece to there, swaps it with the middle. Next piece, rinse and repeat until somebody meets that win condition. Win condition? Win condition. Cool, let me get my words right today. But that's literally it. Less than 60 seconds, and I've given you pretty much all you need to know in how to play the game. And then you'll spend the next 10 to 15 minutes scratching your head thinking, oh god, if I use that, if I use the otter card, that means he's going to get it, which means he's going to leap forward and take my thing. I don't want to use the tiger, I want that tiger card though, and I'm not going to let it go when it happens. Oh, that master's getting a bit close, I don't know, do I take the pawn, I don't know. Oh my word, this gives you a lot of good thinky decisions while giving you a decent looking production, something that catches the eye on the table. And believe me, I had it set up in advance and people were just sort of like, ooh, hello. And they got started and it's the easiest one for me to demo because 60 seconds and I can lead them to it. It's great. And they just play game after game after game. You know, I don't even have to say only one game. Now nah, they'll play two or three and see how it goes because each game will last less than 10 minutes. It's Great, lovely two player abstract game, one of my favorites and one of the best ones I can suggest for new gamers. So with that said, the base game, fantastic. The 10 out of 10 game, you should definitely give this one a look. If even, even if you're not even a fan of chess, give it a look. But if you like chess in the past, then by all means, it's like surefire hit. But we've got three expansions now and I don't even have the boxes for them all because, well, we'll get onto that a bit later. So the first one I want to talk about is the high note. We're going to talk about the good one, the great one. And I don't have the box for this because, frankly, the box for this is pointless. It is Sensei's Path. In the base game, you get 16 of these cards to use, and 16 cards will give you a decent amount of replayability. Well, the expansion basically doubles it by adding another 16 in, so you end up with 32 cards to use. Well, that's pretty sweet. I mean, to be honest, 16 cards will last you a decent amount of time and will more than cater for you. But the 16 you get in Sensei's Path are a little bit more interesting, a little bit more weird with their design. And of course, now you have 32 cards to pick from and it gets ridiculous. So that's literally all it does. It's just basically more of the good stuff. What hurts this a little bit, though, is the fact that it comes in a box similar to this and costs a good... Well, I forget what it costs last time, uh, last time I saw it, but probably a good... 10 to 15 pounds at least, you know, you're, you're paying more for the packaging than you are for this. And honestly, you want to check out One Pit Wonders videos on sustainability and board games? I think she'd flip her lid if she saw all these Onitama packages because this is wasteful. 
It's frankly wasteful packaging. I'm not a fan of the original box being in a weird tower like this. I would have much preferred it if it was in a kind of splendor size box or maybe a carcassonne size box, that kind of thing. But no, they had to go with this weird setup. So the fact that you're paying mainly for just this fancy box with a, a magnetic or like a sort of clip on clasp and artwork around the outside just seems pointless. You literally could have just given me a little baggie with 16 cards in it, charged me five pound and I would have bought it because it all fits in the base game anyway. But that blemish aside, you know, value and that, it's still a great expansion. It's not essential, but if you want to add more variety, all you do is grab this expansion and it does the job. So moving on to the flip side, which is probably my, I would say my least favorite expansion, but that's not to say any of these expansions are bad, but none of these expansions I consider to be essential. And the, probably the least one I would say is Way of the Wind. I haven't got the box for this. I've just got a crumpled up rule book, but essentially the Way of the Wind is a pretty straightforward expansion. It adds a few extra cards that you can use, but they resolve around moving not only your pawn and master, but also this thing. <laughs> and if you can tell what it is, then well, uh, Good luck to you, because you can tell what these students and that look like. The master looks like your quintessential, ah, you, you will wish for an orange tree, but you will get a peach. You know, that, that kind of old master with the beard and everything. And all the students look exactly like martial arts students. In fact, they kind of look like Aang from The Last Avatar. Side note, go watch that series. It's fantastic. But yeah, they do have that sort of kid bold look. But like I say, they work. This thing just looks weird. <laughs> so it's luminescent blue. It's like, it's supposed to be like, air i guess and then it's got some weird creature on the top or something but yeah you gotta look in detail at this in order to figure out what exactly it's supposed to look like so at a distance you get oh there's the master there's the pawn and there's whatever this thing is it's kind of odd but it essentially sits in the in the board and what happens is you use these cards in mingled with the other cards and sometimes you will get to move this thing around. It doesn't capture pieces. What it does is that it blocks opponents' movements and if it lands on a piece that's already there and it's one of yours, it essentially swaps places. So it's something that basically jumbles around with the movement of the game. Now, I like it fine, but I find myself rarely playing with it because firstly, I would never teach this to a brand new player. It's, you know, trying to juggle around all this weird movement that the wind spirit can do is already pretty freaky. But it also makes turns very difficult to plan for because you're sort of thinking, well, hang on, so they could move the pawn to there, but they could also move the pawn to there, but then they could also move the wind spirit to there, which will flip that, which means they could move the pawn to there, which means that, ah, it does introduce quite a bit of like extra complexity with your decision making in this game to have this thing in there. And when it's all said and done, it's fine, but I don't find it ups the enjoyment of the game that much more. Not to say it detracts from the enjoyment, I still think it's fine, but like I say, I'm not as fussed about it. So it's it's my it's my weakest of the three expansions. Again, it comes in another box like this. So again, a bit expensive and a bit wasteful packaging because in this, you literally just get a tiny little rule book, this thing, and this many cards. That's literally all that's in the Way of the Wind set. I mean, oh, blimey, you are paying definitely more for the packaging on this one. So it's fine, but I wouldn't use it that often. It's in there and I might print it out every now and again, but it's overshadowed, I think, by the next expansion, which again, not essential, but interesting. And that is the newest one, Light and Shadow. Light and Shadow, again, big bucks, although on this occasion it actually does warrant a bit of extra packaging because you get a bit more in the backs on this one. You don't, I don't think you get any more cards per se. I'm pretty certain you don't get any more movement cards, although I will just double check, I'm pretty sure. Nope, you don't get more movement cards, so pretty much Sensei's path is where you're going with this one. But what instead you get is a couple of little extra mini neoprene boards, and it's like, okay, interesting. You get two ninja pawns, which again look pretty cool. They, uh, I can't quite tell, but they look like they're female ninjas underneath, but it's it's weird. It's hard to tell, but like I say two ninjas and a couple of screens that you use to effectively cover up your board like this. Now, firstly, component wise, these screens are annoying. <laughs> it's like constantly they're folding in on themselves. You've really got to kind of stretch them out, fold them, flatten them in order to get them to stay where you want them. It's good that they've got the turn sequence on the back of them though, so all the new stuff that you have for the ninjas is on the back of these boards, so it's really easy to teach, but they need to be taller. Now I get why they're this size, because if you open up the actual Onitama box, 
they will fit in there. So there you go. <clears throat> in they go. Ooh, there you go. Put them on the horizontal side and they will fit exactly into the box. And yes, if you take out the insert from the original Lonely Tomlet box, you will fit all three of these expansions in the box. I do guarantee that. But they're not high enough for any tall person who's sitting opposite you because you've got this tiny little pad here in you know imagine that this thing is outstretched in front of you and then you've got this thing in front of you with a screen it's very difficult to not kind of see where an opponent's hand is and stuff like that if you're six foot or taller and sitting on the opposite end of the table so I wish that these things were a bit taller, but that aside, you get a couple more rubber pieces and these are called neoprene mats, along with these little rubber lanterns. But what exactly is the point of the expansion? Well, you in you now play a different sort of Onitama. You have less pawns on the board, so we'll get rid of this. We'll also get rid of these. So you're only playing with three pawns, it's like, that doesn't sound like much. That's because each of you has a hidden ninja on your board. So this ninja essentially occupies a starting space. And when you play a movement card, not only do you have to move the pawn, but you also may move your ninja in the same fashion. But the thing is behind your screen. So your opponent doesn't know where the ninja is. The idea is that the ninja can also capture pieces and the opponent's master, but you're constantly thinking, where could that ninja be? And if that sounds like it's gonna burn your brain, oh my God, it does. <laughs> it burns your brain like right royally. Even with these, it's hard because with the lanterns, you essentially spend the lantern and go, right, uh, a row or column, is your ninja there? And you go, yes. You don't say exactly where it is, it's just there. But if your ninja decides, right, I'm going to capture an opponent's pawn, it shows up on the main board briefly and then goes away again. So you do get a slight idea of where it is after it's struck. But trying to gauge where that ninja is, is hard. You know, I mean, other than the fact that if you're tall, you can practically see where their hand is on the other side of their board. I mean, you've got to try and sort of fake move your pawn or something, which is very difficult to try and keep a straight face while doing. But... It's an interesting way to play it. Again, do not teach this to new players by any means at all. This is definitely what takes Onitama to advanced mode. The Way of the Wind doesn't even take it technically to advanced mode. This one does though. Trying to, get, trying to only use three pieces on your board and a hidden ninja along with an opponent's hidden ninja is quite insane. But that's not actually my favorite way to play this expansion. There's actually another way which I thought was really cool. Here, basically, one player has a normal set of Onitama pawns, like so. The other player doesn't have any. Well, that seems a bit one-sided. How's that work? Because the opponent has both ninjas on their board hidden behind their screen, and that's it. So the ninjas have to try and capture the opponent's master, but then the master has to try and get onto the opponent's seat or kill off the two ninjas. So one player is playing a normal game of Onitama, and they're still using the five movement cards in the same fashion, but now the ninja player is basically trying to dodge this army of students that could capture their ninjas by accident if they're not careful, but try to sort of slip around them in secret and try and sneak up to the master. This is fun for the ninja player because you're trying to figure out a way to kind of bluff where your ninja is so that you don't accidentally get taken by the opponent, but then for the person playing the normal game, it's one of the most tense affairs I've ever seen in an abstract game. The fact that you have very little to go on. You know that they have to start on the back row, so the back row of their board is effectively where the ninjas start. After that though, have fun trying to pick up on them. It's pretty difficult. It's definitely, I think, skewed more in favor of the ninja player than it is the normal player because having hidden information is way more powerful than having more pieces, I think, because you can do so much more when your opponent doesn't know exactly where your stuff is. Even with the two lanterns, it's pretty tricky. In fact, I dare say they should probably be given more than two lanterns in this sort of game. But it is good fun. I enjoyed it. It wasn't difficult to learn the rules to this one. I mean, you get a slightly more detailed rule book in this one, but it's not complicated. I mean, it's just a little extra bit of rule set. And again, it's on the back of the screens. Now, it only really works for the normal game with the screen, not the asymmetrical one that I mentioned. But again, it's not complicated rules. You know, me and my friend, you know, we played this to death to learn these rules, and it literally was pretty straightforward but it gets you thinking. Now, do I like it? 
Yes, I prefer it to Way of the Wind. I think this Way of the Wind is okay, but I think this Ninja one is a much more interesting way to make this game more advanced. It is most definitely not essential though. I mean, you are only using this if you are two die-hard Onitama players who want to get a little bit of extra meat out of the game. If you are just playing this on a casual basis, do not get this expansion. It will just never get played. The same for the Way of the Wind. So, and I always think that Onitama really should be kept as a casual game. You know, I enjoy playing with this Ninja in Shadow, but honestly, one of the best things about Onitama is the fact that it is so simple and so streamlined and so easy to teach any new gamer. So the idea of throwing all this extra stuff in, I just don't feel is that warranted. You gave me more movement cards. Great, I now have more movement cards than I can count. By all means, release another expansion. Five pounds, stick it in the baggie and give me another 16 cards with weird movement on them. Fine, but I don't know if I need all this extra, like, extra bloat to the game. Now, it all stores in the same box, which is good, and, you know, they are still fun expansions. None of these are bad, but none by any means essential. So, verdict-wise, I'd say Sensei's Path is a 9. You know, the value kind of sucks, but it is a good way to add more replayability to the game, so it is a very good expansion. I would give Way of the Wind probably a 6. It's fine. I would use it, but if I hadn't bought it, I wouldn't have lost any sleep over it. And Light and Shadow, I'd give a 7. It's good. I do enjoy playing it, but... I don't think I'm going to get it out that often because I'm more teaching this to new players or playing it fairly casually because I live alone, whereas I'm not the target audience where oh, two, like a couple playing this continuously, like one of their favourite games. So definitely I think for the diehard fans, but you know, a solid expansion all round, but again, wasteful packaging because look, another box contains an insert which you're never going to use, it's another one of these fold out lids with the, uh, you know, semi-magnetic classing which I'm sure cannot be cheap to manufacture these and yet you just put it in the original box and a splendor size box would have done just fine so as I say that's a, a totally different topic when we're talking about sustainability go check out One Pit Wonders videos for more information on that kind of thing but yeah three pretty cool expansions for only timer and hopefully this is giving you some insight into them so that's it for me on this video i'll see you next time remember if you like what you see and if you enjoy these beyond the base game videos please remember to thumbs up the video leave a comment let me know what other expansions for certain games in my collection you'd like me to talk about maybe i've done a video already or maybe i just haven't got round to it and by all means share this content out on social media it would mean the world to me if this could get out because i do think these expansion focused videos are useful they just don't get a lot of views sadly but as I say still doing them because they're quite easy for me to make I don't put too many like weird editing stuff into them this is more about getting out useful information and it is about flashy effects and stuff but until next time I'll see you on the next Boku Meeple video if you like what you see then please remember to check out more content on the channel including my recent top 10 on games that killed other games but you can also check out a previous review I did on Brian Boro an interesting little trick taking game that you might want to consider so take care and remember as always it's only a game bye for now everyone